the first chapter, Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Around the 26th verse. I'm grateful to be in Bible study. Good to see you, Curtis. Um, God is God all by himself. And that's a problem. That's man's problem. Every human being, that's a problem. Because a human being want to run something. I visited one of my cousins today, and his life is in shambles, and he's just in really bad shape, and he begged me for $2, and then he said, let me have five. And uh, I let him have three. And uh, his mom was trying to talk to him, Willie's son, Mark, and trying to talk to him and all this and that. And when he walked out the door, because he got that $3, he called somebody to come get him because he's going to get him some medicine. And uh, as he walked out the door, the mama trying to say this and that, he told us to help the bell. And I said, that, was my, that used to be my very attitude. You see me in a bath fight and help the bell. I don't need your help. The only, only problem I had, Lady Devil, was people wouldn't stay out of my business. If folks would stay out of my business. And so come to find out that that's man's problem, uh, the reason that he can't. Uh, have joy. The reason that he can't be productive is is because he wants to run something. I see how president, and he has never made me mad. It looked like people be mad at him. I just have the mindset, Tara, to let people be who they are. But uh, I know, I believe, that a person can't be successful with that kind of mindset, running over everybody, and it's my way or the highway, and y'all don't count, and whatever. I just, I don't see how that can work. But we will see. Anyway, man's problem is simply the fact that he wants to run his life. If we look at Genesis, the first chapter, and Lady Deborah, let me preface this as saying that I had thought in my mind that we would go along with the workbooks and we would look into the book of Romans. Of course, the book of Romans defines to us about salvation. We've got a twofold problem in the, in the church world and, and in the body of Christ as well, the first thing is, is that we don't understand salvation. We don't understand how it is that a man would come into a right standing with God. Now, it seems like to me, Lady Deborah, that that's not even important until we get to a funeral. Seems like that ain't even important. Everybody's trying to get more. If they're making $15 an hour, they're trying to make 20 if they got a car and everything, they satisfied with that car until they see somebody with a bigger one, now they got to have it. And it, it, all the concern is how many square feet is my house and how many rooms I got and how many bathrooms I got. But the moment touch, that we get here at church and somebody laying down there, we got to stay here three hours to try to put him in heaven. We come to church and stay here three hours singing and talking and whatever, never name Jesus' name. When Jesus stood up in John the 14th chapter and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm tired of blaming other folk for my ignorance. I'm tired of blaming other folk for my ignorance. You want to know, find out. God got a word. He got a word. Part of it's your problem is you got somebody teaching you that's illiterate. You know they can't read their name in big boxcar letters, but you sit up there talking about he's your teacher. What's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with him. Ain't nothing wrong with him, and you wonder why it is that even when he get ready to go uh, here or go there, he got to ask you for gas money. And you wonder why. He's not qualified. That don't put nobody down, but everybody ain't qualified. Look at your neighbor and tell him this. Everybody ain't qualified. You just not qualified. And God has to qualify you for this. He qualifies you for this. And I, how are you going to teach me and you don't know as much as I know? Well, the thing is, because we don't care. We don't care. So uh, salvation is explained and it's expounded in the book of Romans. Nobody, I'm going to tell you, this is a cry and shame. I preached for 25 years. I was saved for 25 years. Nobody ever went through the book of Romans with me. Now, I could have guess could have gone by myself, but they just didn't. 
They talked about some things in it, but they never explained. And it's really very simple. The first three chapters let you know that everybody is lost. And we bad about that. We want to put one person here, one person there. You look in our, in our churches and everything. We got a different kind of uniform for people to put on. We got a white uniform for these folks over here. White shoes, white uh, uh, stockings on, white hat and all that. And then we got, you know, we put them right here when the fact about it is, is that you can put all white on and you're still a human being. We take the pastor and put him up here and put him a big robe on and, and, and whatever and, and got cross on every side and then he got this and that and, and he, he got, you got a certain way and then a certain area right there, you get ready, no, 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 step up here. But you see, the book of Romans says that, that everybody is in the same shape. Give me Romans 3. Give me Romans 3. Give me Romans 3. Romans 3, round, round. Romans 3. And so what I'm, what I'm enjoying about Bible study, I'm, I'm not discouraged at all, y'all. You know, it's just like I was kind of giving my testimony to my cousin today, you know, about this and that. He said, you said that, because I told him I got sober for my children. I said, now, nah. I said, I, 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 I thought about it, and I said, these children deserve a daddy. And I said, if I don't get sober, I'm not going to be a part of their life. And I could just see myself, mother, going over to visit them, and some other man done whooped them, and I can't say nothing about it, because I'm out the house. And he asked me, he said, did you do that for my benefit? Did you say that for my benefit? You know, he's thinking I'm trying to throw shade on him. I said, no, sir. I said, that's my testimony. I said, I ain't got no problem with how you living or what you doing. That's you. That's you. But I got a mindset to myself that I, I want to help me. And what I found out is, is that you can't help nobody else until you help yourself. There's another book that I read that says, surely you cannot transmit what you don't have. You got to have some yourself in order to help somebody else. Then you got to love people in order to share. Some folk get stuff and don't, they don't want to share it with nobody. But if you love people, you put them before you. You don't, you don't have no, you're not jealous of them. You ain't trying to hold them. And that's one thing that have hurt us in church, Lady Deborah, is that we had a leader that was jealous hearted. He didn't love us like he did. If you love me, you know what? If somebody really loved you, and I'm going by the best example I know on this earth, Tara, is my mom. If somebody really loved you, you never have to even doubt. You never even doubt. Now, my mama done beat me almost down to the ground with an extension cord. My mama done talked to me worse than any, anybody ever lived here. On this earth, she done talked to me just that bad. But for some reason, I ain't never doubted that my mama loved me. You, you, you know that a person, and a person that loved you can help you. You see? Because you want to buck up against it, you want to say, how you do everything, but then you have to just hold your head down, but they love me. They wouldn't even say it if they didn't love me. So, in the book of Romans, we find out uh, about salvation, and we find out how to be saved. But God told me, he said, you need to transcend from Romans over to Galatians because now we are people that are saved that don't know how to operate in their salvation. You're saved, but you're still trying to live like a person that's not saved. You're saved, but you're still leaning to your own understanding. Isaiah said that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so that's why I got to study the word of God because this ain't going to just come to me. Because what come to me is man's ways. What I said, Romans, the third chapter. Let's move on with the word. Romans, I mean, Acts. Romans come out to Acts, don't it? Or does it? Okay. Romans, the third chapter. Look what he says in verse 9. What then? Are we, you got it? Let me see. What then? Are we better than they? Okay. He says, what then? Are we better or in a worse case than they? No. In no wise, because we have before proved both the Jews and the Gentiles that they are all under sin. You see, we got a sin nature from, 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 uh, from Adam. How do you know that? Run over to the fifth chapter. Run to the fifth chapter. That's all I need, I promise you. If somebody had just done this like this right here, explained it to me, 
and everything. I, I, you know, I might can't get it as fast as you, but just work with me. Work with me. Romans, the fifth chapter. He says here, and you know what? Satan had got to be really, really something. Because as good as this stuff is, we learn this place ought to be full. It has been. It has been. It was, I, I counted one night almost 80 folks in Bible study. You see what I'm saying? Because this is good stuff right here. I ain't going to run away from London. <laughs> I'm living my best life. I'm not telling no lie. I'm what a happy Negro. I'm skipping happy. I ain't you be telling no lie. And you know what? You really don't know what it feel like to be comfortable until you've been uncomfortable. You see, you get things that you take for granted. When it's taken away and everything, you're so happy. I know one time I called myself trying to play basketball and I couldn't move on my knee. I had to do like this right here in order to get up and everything. And when that knee finally got in better shape, boy, I'm gonna tell you what, I was grateful for it. it, it it's a wonderful thing when you got an understanding. What, what, what did I say, Lady Deborah? I said verse nine. Look what he says. Uh, no, I'm in three, 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 Roman three. Verse, verse 9, 3. I went over to 5. I sure did, didn't I? I want to go to 5. Okay, look what the Bible says here uh, in verse 12. Therefore, or uh, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by or through sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, for unto the law. Sin was not in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. God told me, say, ain't nothing wrong with the law. The law got a purpose, and the purpose is to show you you're out of order. Now, you can't tell a stubborn person that they're out of order. I don't care how out of order they get. I haven't seen this even since I've been pastoring. I don't care how out of order a person get. If they, if they haughty, if they stiff-necked, they uncircumcised, you might as well hold what you got to say. You see, the book, book, the book of Proverbs, I think it says, self fool won't take rebuke. He, he just won't. But you know, I, every one of us get out of line, and the law, the law shows us. If it wasn't no law, where there's no law, there is no transgression. You can drive them down the road just any kind of way you want to if it ain't no speed limit. But the moment they get a speed limit, then you got some that's right and some that's wrong. And so because we have a sin nature, because of the fact that, that I got something inside of me that won't let me comport my behavior to the law, then that lets me know something that I should have known that my, see, by one man, Adam put me in this right here. And Jesus gets me out of it. And so if, if the one man that put me in this lady, Deborah, if he had been aware of it, I wouldn't have been put in it. So how did I get in it? Okay, let's go back over to Genesis, the first chapter. You see, everything has to have a motor to run, and we switched motors. We went and got our own motor. The motor was God, but we decided we want to run off of self. And that's a hard thing, y'all. And the thing about self is self will make a fool out of you. Everybody know but you. You just standing up. You just somebody, you know, all up before the people, and you just talking and everything. And boy, you think you're really impressing people. And they sit up there shaking their head. So why don't they sit down? A number self. That's all. Genesis 1 and uh, 26. The Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Talks about he, how that he would have dominion over everything. Go down to verse 27. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. When God created man, was nothing wrong with man. I want you to know. And that's why it hurt us so bad when we look at our condition. That's how come you have misery that's within you because something that's in you said, I know I wasn't created to be like this right here. That's the only way a man can get up. It was some more folks, Robert, that was in the ditch with me and you. They was in the same ditch with us, but it wasn't nothing inside of them that told them that that was the wrong place. You got to, even though you in that place, something, God put something down, you say, uh-uh, no. This, this, this right here, 
I'm in the same shape as other folk, but God didn't create me for this. It, it's something better. So God created man in his image, and God gave man everything that he needed. Man, man, they don't say nothing in there about no crying, don't say nothing about it, no sorrow, wasn't no death, wasn't nobody mad, wasn't nobody, you know, throwing shade at nobody, wasn't nobody looking upside the head. Lord have mercy. You know, uh, y'all just come out of what Christmas season and everything. You get with your folks and look like things going to be fine. Then somebody, thank you, Jesus. Some thank your Lord. Thank you, Lord. That rain, they asked me last night, talking about, you know, we have a Cocaine Anonymous meeting over here on Tuesday and Thursday. They asked me, talking about something, we going to have a meeting? I said, yes, Jesus. I need to get away from these folks and get over here and, and, and sit down here and try to get on a spiritual basis. Because most folks are not living on no spiritual basis. Now, what do I mean by a spiritual basis? What I mean, Tasha, when I say a spiritual basis, that means that you have... Uh, given yourself over to be led and directed by the Spirit of God. See, most folks that go to church ain't trying to be led by the Spirit of God. Most folks that go into church trying to make the pastor like them. They trying to become a big shot off in the church, and they trying to get a title off in the church, and they they trying to be this and trying to. Be, but you know what? When you get that right whooping. Then you got to get the right teaching that tells you that you can't lean to your own understanding. See, we're going we're gonna to get into it tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Look, look what he says here. What, what verse am I at now? There? 27. God created male and female, created he them. Now, notice this right here. That when God created man and woman, they was on the same basis. Wasn't no thing about a man was over a woman. He created them. One, male and female created he them. He created Adam, but then he was, Adam was created first, but he put Eve within him. And that's the reason that the best thing in the world, the Bible said he that find a wife find a good thing. A good thing. My mama told me the other day, she said this right here. She said, look, I'm, mama done died, daddy done died. She said, child done died. She said, but ain't nothing like the death of a husband. You see, you see, the Bible says he created them male and female. When you find the one that's supposed to be with you, and, and, and God gave me this right here, the one that leaves you, that ain't yours. If they can stand to walk off and to leave you, and I, now, you know, most of us leave, but I'm talking about stay gone. The one that leave and stay gone. I'm telling y'all the truth. That ain't none of yours. But the one they got for you, they might leave, but they'll turn around and come back. You see, pride won't keep them away. Uh, uh, keep them away. So God created man and female. He created everything was right. And this, I, what I know today and the reason I'm here at Bible study tonight, I want to find out the right way. I want to find out what's God's way. I know how I think. I know how the church think. know how you think. But I want to find out God's way. Because that's the only way that you're going to have good success is going on God's way. And so then, uh, he creates a male and female. Now, watch, watch, watch what happens, though. After, after that, they have a fall. Look, let's go to Genesis 3. The serpent comes in, and the serpent goes to the weaker vessel. He goes to that part that came out of him. You see, a woman was never supposed to, to, she was on an equal basis, mother, but she was never supposed to exist separate from a man. See, he created them together and she wasn't supposed to walk off like they got now. Notice the spirit that's in the land now. I don't need no man. I don't want to get married. I get what I want from him and, and, I, and I keep 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 on going and, and whatever. You don't watch it, they be done fooled you. You see, because she's she more crying. She more, see, the, they said when you go to prison, they said that what you need to do is say you need to find the biggest one and go and jump on him. You won't have no more problem. Well, the serpent, when he came, Brother Bird, into the garden, he found the smartest one. I hate to tell y'all that. He found the most, he said, I'm telling you, they be about four, so we playing chess, they, we playing checker, they playing chess. They so far ahead of us in their thinking and whatever, we kind of slow. He said, if I get her, I got her. And, and he wasn't lying, was he? He, he don't even say nothing about him asking no questions. At least she did ask a question. He ain't asked no question. The Bible says she gave it to him. When she gave it to him, that was good enough for him. But anyway, he said that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the God. You got to know what God said. And then you got to hold to God's word. You can't be shaky. You can't be double-minded. Book of James says, don't let that double-minded man think he shall uh, get anything from the Lord. He's like the wave that's tossed 
and turn. And so you, you got to stake your claim on God's word. That's what Jesus had to do in Matthew, the fourth chapter, when Satan came to him. The Bible said that the spirit led him into the wilderness in order to be tempted. You see, the first Adam had failed. The first Adam took his own way. And the second Adam that came, he had to stand up in order for us to be redeemed and brought back to God. And so when he came to him, bringing him what he knew he needed, he was hungry, y'all. The Bible says that he could be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. He was tempted in all ways, such as we were yet without sin. So when the enemy came to him and talked to him about food and everything, he said, no, devil. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If you get this word down in you, if you believe the word of God, it's going to produce faith in you. And God is getting ready to do things for you that you could not do before. Only God, let me tell you something. Only God can bring peace in a house. Only God. You've been trying to bring peace by buying this and buying that. Have you lived long enough to know your money won't bring no peace in your house? Some of the richest folks in the world can't stay together. And I'd be looking at them thinking, Lord have mercy, Michael Jordan, you can't keep your wife. How, what, I, what chance I got? Don't let David Dabber, back when he was, you know, fine and all that, he don't got fat now. But back when Michael Jordan was fine, they said, tell me something, something you know, I, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Look what the Bible says. You know, I ain't lying on She's sitting right there. He said, the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree, but of the fruit of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it. Now she adding to it. You ain't sticking strictly with the word of God. Folk get mad at you. And that's when I tell folks stuff, I say, I got Bible on it. I mean, this is what he said, because I found out that all other ground is sinking ground. What I think, what you think, ain't none of it going to stand. But what God said, the Bible said, let God be true. And let every man, I'm happy right now, let every man be alive. The word of God, y'all, I know what it is to have a house that's so messed up you don't even want to come home. I'm just so messed up. I know what it is to, 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 to be so weak in character myself, to find myself doing stuff that don't, I'm putting my life in danger, all, doing all kinds of things I ain't got no business doing. And I said, I know today, can't nobody help me but God. Can't nobody help me but God. This right here, brother, this is my enemy right here. My mind, in the Bible, that's reading the Bible, said, lean not to thine own understanding. Look what happens here. This is how all this mess got started. He says, for God does know in the day you eat. First of all, he first of all, he disputes the word of God. First of all, he calls God a lie. He said, You shall not die. Folk been dying ever since. But he said, You shall not die. God brought life. God ain't never brought no death. That, that, you know, that's the reason I guess most of my loved ones and a whole lot of folks, somebody called me dead and me do a funeral, because they don't want nobody lying at their funeral. Getting up there talking about God saw an angel and he could go all this right here. God ain't got nothing to do with death. Death came because man would not believe God. God ain't never meant for you. To, you know, death don't even make no sense. Here you are, you raise up children. Do all you can for them. Y'all get up. By the time that y'all get to the place where, you know, you got peanut butter with your jelly and you got... Everything is going a little better, now you got to die. That don't make no sense. That's because of sin, y'all. And he says, you should not, for God does know. Look what he says in verse 5 here, Sheriff. He said, for God does know in the day you eat them, then your eyes, your eyes shall be open. Hmm. Your eyes shall be open. That's man's problem right there. What he want to do. I don't need no eyes open. When God is taking me my way. I don't need to see nothing because God is leading and directing my path. The problem go when I start looking and If you walk in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I need some help. See, this, this right here ain't for the folk that don't think they don't need no help. That's when Paul told the Corinthians, Corinthians, he said, look here among you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad God don't see like man. See, 
I don't know about you, but if God saw like man saw, I'd have been overlooked. I'd have been overlooked. I wouldn't have been picked. I wouldn't have been chosen. But God looks at your heart. And God looked at your heart. And he knew with your messed up record and with all that, but he knew that your heart. That once that he sold you the light, once that you saw the way that you tell God yes. And so he says, God does know that the day you eat there, then your eyes shall be open. See, you don't need no God no more. And look what he said. And you shall be as God. <laughs> you going to be like God. But see, God said, I'm God all by. Ladies, I've been teaching us in Isaiah, where he stood up in Isaiah. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? He said that the Lord God said he's not weary. He don't sleep, not slumber. And everything, he said, wait on the Lord. So he'll renew your strength. Have you lived long enough to see that? You didn't have no strength at all. And you, and you waited on God. And God renewed. That's when they surprised when they see you now. Because they thought you had run out. They thought you had burned out. But they don't know that God came in and recharged. He said, now, sir, I ain't run out. Woman, I saw a woman tonight in Walmart. She was talking about, you got so many hats. You, you're a pastor and you're attorney. You're doing this right here. And I said, I ain't doing now one of them. God is doing all of it. Every night I don't get tired because God is doing it. Now if I was trying to do it, I'd be cussing folks out and mad and, and doing all that. God have your way. When you realize you don't know how to drive, then you at least give him the stern wheel. When you realize you don't know, but that's a personal thing. Can't nobody convince you of that. You got to become convinced of it. You got to become convinced like the Baptist deacon was when he got down on his knees. And sincerely, from the depth of his heart, he said, Lord, if you don't help me, if you don't help me, I ain't going to be able to stand the storm. Then he turned around, mother, and he told him, he said, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. No other help. I can't trust myself. See, I done said too many times what I wasn't going to do. I, I, done, I, done, I done set up and plotted out my life. My life going to be like this right here. And then, then I had nothing there to put my mouth for other folks. Look at him. I can't see how in the world. How did he do that? And whatever. And I found out later on, found myself slipping and tipping and doing it. I trying to hide and whatever. And the book of Romans lets us know that there's none, none righteous. No, not one. Quit trying to justify yourself before God. Job asked the question. He said, God, can a leper change his spot? And wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He said, I wish that there was, I wish I had an umpire. I wish there was somebody that would stand between me and you. I, I thought I could get an understanding. Thank God for the word of God. Look what the Bible says here. You, you God know the day you eat, then you, then you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. See, I want to make a choice. I want to decide what my life is going to be. And you, you see, and the, the songwriter said, the safest place in the world. It's in the will of God. Y'all, yeah. I'm telling you what, for the day that you give it over to him, the day that you give it over to him, and you cry out and you say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. You make me, mold me, do what you want to do with me, God. I'm, I'm sick and tired. I can't be the husband that I want to be. I can't be the father that I need to be. I need your help. I need you to come in. And so, that is the problem. We learn in the book of Romans where we at. But now look at this right here. He started out man and woman was equal. But look over at 1 Corinthians in 11th chapter. Oh, this time go fast. I got 15 minutes. 1 Corinthians 11th chapter. That's all right. I'll do what he tell me to do. I have no regrets. 1 Corinthians 11th chapter. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just read up here. He's, Paul here says, Be ye followers of me as I also am Christ. In the third chapter of 2 Corinthians, he said that Paul was the master builder. Paul was given the plan. You see, Moses was given the law. He came down from Mount Sinai and he gave them the law. But now... The, uh, uh, the gospel of the grace of God came from Paul. Paul received the revelation. You see, man must understand 
that nothing that he has or ever will have was earned. Man must understand that, that God does not give people what they deserve. But out of his graciousness, because he is their father and because he loves them, he gives them what they need. And you see, whenever I deal with God on the basis of if I do this, then God would do that, then I'm on the wrong road. And so Paul thought he was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. It's in Philippians, the third chapter, concerning the law, blameless. I'm a, I'm, I'm a this and I'm that. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, and, uh, circumcised on the eighth day. I've done these things that the law said and everything. But see, when he met Jesus, Jesus showed him, Sherbert, that look, you ain't nothing. All that you're doing, you still ain't chinning the bar. All that you're doing, you're right now on your way to kill folk over your religion. He said, all that. And, and then, you see, when you see that you ain't nothing, that's when you look to God. Yeah. Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. As long as self is on the throne in my life, as long as I think it's something different than me, than other folk, as long as I think that God owed me because, you know what, I bought them benches that's in the church and I don't do this and I don't do that, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't commit adultery, I don't do that. As long as man think that it's something about him, then he, God is here for me. And that's the reason that he had to knock Paul off of that beast. Because Paul thought he was something. Paul says that, said that I, I, I persecuted the church. And I thought I did right. He said, but God had mercy on me. He said, because I did it ignorantly. I did it ignorantly. I don't know about you, but I done done a whole lot of stuff ignorantly since I've been saved. I just didn't know no better. I didn't know no better. But I thank God that I ain't, I don't, thank God that I got a heart that when God showed me, I said, yes, Lord. Because you see, I can't deny the word. Once I see the word, right, what it said, what it said. And folks always like to say stuff like, well, you know, you interpreted that way and I interpreted that way. No, I ain't talking about what's in Revelation and the seals and the white horse. And I, I'm talking about when the Bible says you are saved by grace. In other words, it's just the goodness of God. You're saved because Jesus left heaven and came down and died in your place because you couldn't die and get back up. He died and he was resurrected. And when you believe that, now you can't believe the death, burial, and resurrection until you're ready to die. And when I'm talking about you ready to die, I'm talking about die to you. When you give up on you, you give up on you ever achieving righteousness, then you believe the death, burial, and resurrection, and he vicariously takes you through it, and you are, uh, uh, then you are resurrected a new creature. Because God takes you out of Adam. That's the problem. In Adam, let me tell you something. You ever been to the place where you just doing it and didn't care who knew it? Now, if you get saved, then you want to sneak and try to do this. Before you get saved, man, you don't care about nobody. I'm grown. Three times seven plus something. Yeah, seven something. I got so grown. I told my mama I was grown. I'm, I'm telling her now. She the one had me. She know better than I do that I was grown. I don't think. Look what he says here. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So then what happens, um, Mother Plan, is what happens is, is that when man fell into sin, remember what uh, God told her punishment will be? Your desire shall be to your husband. So then the woman got displaced from being there with the man to where she was up under the man. Okay? But now, in Christ, give me, take me back to Romans 5. Take me back to Romans 5. Look by 5 and 19. Somewhere along in that. Romans 5. Yeah, I'm here now. Fourteen. Let's go back up some. Go back up some. Let's start, we start, I started 12. Wherefore, it's by one man, sin entered into the world. And that's how man got in that place. It's because man was trying. She, she said, you're you, you going to be as God. You're going to take God's place. 
And that's the reason that the cross is necessary, and that's the reason the cross is not preached now. The only thing that's preached mostly in the church is, is keep the law. Something that you can't do. You see, the law is carnal in the fact that it's not of faith. It don't take no faith to keep the law. All that happens is you end up being prideful about what you don't do. You see? So the Bible says here, Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For into the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. I'm not going to take you there, but it's in your Bible. If you don't believe me, go look it up when you get home. Because of what Jesus Christ has done, men's sin is not imputed unto them. You go to church and they sit up there and tell you what you can't do. Don't do this right here. You're going to hell if you do this and you're doing that. And you sit up lying right there. Oh, I got you here, but I, don't, I hate to tell you something. Don't show it to you. Take me to 2 Corinthians 5. That's all right. If I don't get back to it. I don't want to say nothing that it, and you don't see it for yourself. 2 Corinthians 5. You got me? Let's go on down to uh, maybe about verse 15. Okay. Look what the Bible says here. Uh, verse 14. The love of Christ constrained us because we judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that's what makes it where we don't sit up and put our mouth on other folk. Because we realize that everybody was dead in their trespasses and sin. The only way you got out of your trespasses and sin but it was because of what Jesus did, not what you did. Not what you did. My kids had a hard time coming up and everything because they had stuff. You know, they had the car. My, my son, when he was in high school and everything, had a phone in his car and, and the rims and all that. Well, that don't make people like you or nothing. They say, you, 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 that your dad bought you that stuff. How you going to brag about that? Your dad bought you. You ain't had nothing. You ain't went out and did nothing. You see? And it's the same way about us, about being saved. What you got to brag about? When you leave heaven and come down here and die, how much blood did you shed? You see? But see, you get pumped up in church because they don't put they don't give you that title and they don't give you this and give you that, thank you, this and that. But, the, but Paul here says, look here, the love of God constrained us. We understand it was just God's love that, that saved us. And so, so therefore, we was, all was dead. He died. And that he died for all in verse 15. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Get out yourself. Thank you, Jesus. You're talking about being a happy person. Yeah. Talking about being a happy person. You're miserable because you, you, cause you think about yourself all the time. That wouldn't make you miserable because you sit up every, all your thought is about you and I don't know my, my stomach and, and my this and my that. But the, the moment that you begin to think about somebody else, and, well, I wonder do mother have, I wonder is she warm, I, I wonder is this right here. And you, you, begin, you forget about your stuff and, and you put it where it's supposed to be because I promise you, God will take care of you. I wish I had about seven witnesses that know for a surety that God will. God will take care of you. I, I, I go to my death saying that, Nikki. I, I just believe it. Look what he says. And, 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 and that he died for all, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Verse 16. Well, for his for we know no man after the flesh. We're not bragging on nobody's flesh. And, and all this given on to the pastor and the bishop and their part, just, just a parade of flesh. Like, it, like it's one man that's different from another man. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get my mind right. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if you can get your mind right, man, then you can start walking right. But if your mind all jumble up, now I'm telling you, they got these church folk messed up. Yeah. This stuff is an abomination, y'all. It's an abomination. I was up last, uh, what, Christmas Eve night, about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was watching them Catholic folk. Now, you're talking about some people messed up. They, but I'll tell you, it's pretty. They got, man, the robes. They got, I mean, it's orchestrated. They got, man, these folks over here, and they know exactly when to come in and all that. And the Pope walked up. They call him the Father. So the Father, when the Father walks up and everything, the Bible says, don't call no man Father. But the Father comes up, and he takes a, a, a little baby, like a, a, a doll or something. They're supposed to be Jesus. And he kissed the baby, and all of them just about falling out. Oh, Lord. But you see, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4th chapter, it sounds funny. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4th chapter, in the 4th verse, he said, if this gospel be here, it's good news. And the good news is it ain't about me. 
Because I'll tell you what, I come up short every time, y'all. I ain't never hit 100. I ain't never been able to just do it, just, just cross every T, dot every I. But I, when I find the good news, the good news is that Jesus told me, go somewhere and sit down. I got this. And he went and he died in my behalf. And he shed his blood in my behalf. And he paid the price for sin. And so therefore, my sins is not imputed unto me. That means I can't go to church everywhere because they don't understand. They don't, make, they don't make sin right. But what I'm telling you is the Bible is right. And the Bible says that my sins are not imputed unto me. Why is that, Vanda Jr.? The reason is because even if you in court and you committed murder, and all, they got all the evidence, eyewitnesses, they got a tape there. And they got a confession where you say you killed. And you, while you stand up there, you have a heart attack and die. That case over. You can take all the evidence and you can put it wherever you want to. That case over. Why is that? Because the person is dead. Well, when he went and died in my behalf, that took care of sin. That took care of the law. That took care of transgression. But the fact about it is, in Romans, the fifth chapter, at the end of the chapter, he says, no, he said, no matter how much sin you got, grace covers all of that. Yeah. He said that, okay, so, so, so what should we say then? Starts in the sixth chapter. And we're going to use that to, to, to piggyback and to move into Galatians. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Where grace may abound? He said, God forbid. Know you not that as many of you that were baptized into Christ was baptized into his death? Ain't no dead man sinning. He dead to this world. He dead to these things. But I have to learn how to walk by faith. The Bible says the just shall live. We, it's quoted in the New Testament as the just shall live by faith. But it actually comes from Habakkuk where he said the just shall live by his faith. I live by the faith of Christ. Christ went before me. And so then, when I reckon my members as dead, then I do not have to yield my members unto sin. But what we do is, we try to do it ourselves. And Galatians talks about what is the fruit of the flesh? Fornications and adulteries and seditions and hatred and variance, all that come from me. But the, what the fruit of the spirit? When I reckon myself as dead, and allow the spirit. Have you ever been walking in the spirit and you find yourself saying stuff and doing stuff you know and you'll come back and tell somebody, say, I know that ain't me. I know that if they had said that to me, everybody had been cussed out. <laughs> dumped and everything else. You know, some of us like, used to like to grab folks and dump them so we can tell about how, how bad we be. But the spirit don't do that. Yeah. The spirit don't do that. The spirit is kind. Easily entreated and temperance. You know what the spirit will do? The spirit will allow somebody to think they're making a fool at you. And you walk off just happy as you can be. Say, so you know what? You can have that. You can have that. They don't thought they don't beat you out of something or whatever. But you know what I heard one day? He said, the cow is mine. I got about three folks that said, Pastor, I ain't bragging or nothing, but I don't want nothing. I ain't bragging or nothing. Because I know from where God brought me from. If I think about it long enough, I go to crying. I know from where God brought me from. I know. But when I begin to let God have his way. And let, begin to walk in the spirit. And the thing about it is, it will humble you. But you don't get braggadocious and arrogant or nothing. Because you realize that all of the glory. All of the glory. And people compliment me and say this right here. And I don't say that, you know, well, God, to God be the glory and all that. Because sometimes that sounds so self-serving and that sounds so religious or whatever. And I just say thank you. But I know. I know in my heart that God get all the glory. I ain't got to put no bumper sticker on the back of my car. Because it's down in my heart. Give me a couple of more verses. I'm on. So he says here, uh, we don't know no man after the flesh. Though we knew Christ after the flesh. And that's the reason that you can't really get no understanding, Lady Deborah, stand over there in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because that was Christ in the flesh. That's when he came as a man, and, and he showed that he was verily the Messiah. The signs that followed him, 
the teaching, standing on the board of ship and commanding the sea to be still and the wind to hush. Those were the signs of the Messiah. He said, but we don't know him like that no more. He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, do I have a witness that it's a difference when you're in Christ? Amen. It's a difference. It it's a difference when you're in Christ. Oh, yes, sir. Now, most of us need teaching yes. on how to uh, navigate and how to operate in Christ. Mm -hmm. Because we still had a body of sin. We don't have an old man. The old man was crucified with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we had a body of sin. What's the body of sin? Sometimes when you have uh, a career... They talk about the body of work that you did. You know, I got so many trials I've done. This is my body of work. Well, we have a body of sin. Jesus. We got a nasty past. I know more about that than I know about another side. And that body of sin. Now, the past have a way of coming up and making you want to go back to it. I know I ain't talking to nobody but myself. The past have a way. Of coming back. Now you already left that. I know. Let me give you a good example. How many of y'all that you were with somebody and, and the Lord delivered you left them, and then you went back and you wasn't there but a minute till you realized this? I come, I left. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. He says he's a new creature. You're a whole new creation, but you have to believe that by faith because you can't see it physically because your hands look the same. That body of sin still want to come up. You still want to react like you used to react. But by faith, you see? And if you think about it, you say, you know what? I know I ain't the same person I used to be. I know what happened to me. I know that supernaturally God has taken me out of Adam, out of, uh, uh, Adam and put me in Christ. Behold, all things have become new and all things of God who have reconciled us. God did it all. I'm almost through, y'all. Who have reconciled us to himself. He did not do it because I made my mind up to live right. He did not do it because I joined church. He did not do it because the pastor preached a good message. He did it by Jesus Christ. The Bible says, uh, be kind-hearted, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. And so therefore, I don't have to go around talking about some Lord, forgive me. Lord, God already has forgiven me. And he don't do it because I'm talking about Lord, forgive me. He did it because Jesus. And see, that's the reason the devil won't let them talk about Jesus in church. Because Jesus is your only help. Jesus is your only hope. Have you noticed that how the devil tried to keep you away from the very thing going to help you? Okay, I put it like in these terms right here. God put somebody in your path to help you. And that's the very person that God, that the devil had you walking by. I don't know how long. I done done it. I done walked by some. Then I don't want to fool with them. They ain't foolish enough. But they, they were the very person that had the word that would help you. That's the reason you have to have humility. And humility simply means thinking about something besides yourself. He says, to wit, Okay, he has recognized silence to himself. Y'all give me this next two or three minutes, please. This got good. Who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. He, he has given me the ministry, mother, to tell men, women, boys, and girls that by Jesus Christ, you can be reconciled back unto God. It ain't got nothing to do with you making no vows Got nothing to do with you joining church. By Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who shed his blood on Calvary's hill, on your behalf, your sin debt has been paid. Your sin debt was paid before you ever got here. But you've got to believe it. With the hard man believeth unto righteousness. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you this right here. The reason you ain't where you was is because you believe something different. Mm -hmm. That reason you better watch what you believe. You can sit up there and talk all you want to, but what you believe in your heart, that's what's going to show up. Because the old saying is, we make our mouth say anything. But you are in the heart. So, okay, I'm almost there. Said, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not 
imputing their trespasses unto them. You see how they've been preaching foolishness to us for years? They'll pass right over there. That, that, that's no private interpretation. You can't take that but one way. That because of what God did through Christ. Yeah. Woo, that's what make me praise him. Yeah. Woo, Jesus. Yeah. Woo, Lord. That's what make you love your mama like you love her. Because you know your mama had no reason. You didn't even treat her right all your life. <clears throat> Talk about you didn't even come around her. You around all other folks. But yet she loved you so much. That when you got a little sense and you come back, she was still there because she loved you. Yeah. You know? Because we run at folk that don't care nothing about us. But he, he didn't impute our trespasses unto them and have committed unto us this word of reconciliation. Clap your hands for the Lord. I'm sorry. I want to thank the Lord for the sound technician.